Hi, this is Stephen Brower. For Chapter 6, there's just two topics that I, I want to go over. Um, one is going to be sort of the locking mechanism, the different processes used, and the other one is how code can be um, split into concurrent processes where each processor can work on a different piece um, of, of code. All right, for the first piece, um, kind of what I go through right here is more the idea of uh, sort of a signal. Now, the, the chapter is going to go through a couple different ways in which processes can interact. Uh, the idea of using either a semaphore or a signal or a lock or so on. Um, and so conceptually what I have here is the sort of a ghost signal associated with the printer, meaning there's nothing going to the printer right now and that printer is available. So suppose process one comes along and it wants to send something to the printer. It checks to see is the uh, you know, the printer available, and since it sees the go symbol, then it says, okay, it can go and then use that printer. So it will then go and send its uh, print information to the printer. Um, as that information is going to the printer, the sort of a, a lock or the stop mechanism coming on the printer. So this way, if another process comes along and tries to print, it can't because that printer is in use and the way it knows it's in use by looking at the signal to see that something is using the printer. Um, so let's just say now what this arrow is kind of showing is that there's still data that process one is sending to the printer. Once process one is then done with the printer, it's freed up and now we get our go signal again. So process two realizes, hey, it's available. So it starts to send information to the printer and that uh, printer now becomes in a in a lock state and so now if another process comes along it can't print because that uh, that, that signal is this red signal the stop signal uh, is there so the chapter going into sort of a so the subtle difference between the test and the set the wait and signal and uh, the semaphores uh, on one of them, they actually get into, and to be frankly honest, I, I myself have trouble with the P and the V, which is supposed to be Dutch, uh, the Dutch words for test and set, and um, maybe it's me, but I just keep struggling with P and V for that. Um, it's the kind of thing I need a cheat sheet for uh, to go through it. Uh, the other thing that's going on in uh, Chapter 6 is the idea how things can be done. We can break things down into steps and each processor can handle a different step. Now here's a very big equation um, and the idea is um, that there are pieces of the equation that can be worked on independently. Uh, meaning like one processor can be working on calculating this while another processor is calculating this, another processor is calculating this. Uh, so if we have this equation here are some steps that we can go through for trying to break it down into pieces that can be done over multiple processors. Um, so one, we're going to have, um, well, for this example, we're going to have three processors. And the first thing we're going to look for are all of the calculations that are in parentheses. Well, this D plus E has to get calculated before it's used in this other part of the equation. This F minus G has to get calculated, but they both can be calculated at the same time. In other words, these are four different variables, D, E, F, G. Um, so the D and the E can be calculated by one processor. This F minus G can be calculated by another processor. What these T's here represent is sort of like a temporary storage area. Um, so that the D plus E is temporarily going to be stored in this T2. This F minus G is going to be temporarily stored into T3. Well, now that we have, the idea is this is supposed to be an exponent. Now that we have this number and we have this number, we can then do the exponent. And so now I have this here as being a separate step, meaning that at this point in time, this processor can do this this processor can do this. At the next point in time, it's that a processor, here I'm showing as processor 2, is taking T2, which is the result of this calculation, T3, which is the result of this calculation, and carrying out that exponentiation. Um, other things we look for when breaking down an equation, all multiplications and divisions. So over here we have this A divided by B. Now that A divided by B actually can be done the same time that these pieces are done. Um, oh, by the way, I would have actually normally done 
these on CPU 1 and CPU 2 and this on CPU 3. I'm just trying to be consistent with the way the book had laid it out. But actually this was determined, these were determined first uh, before this one. Um, I, so with this code begin and co-end, that means that we have three pieces of code and each of these pieces of code can go to different processors and since they're dealing with different variables they can be done at the same time they can be done concurrently so we have uh, these concurrent statements that are going at the same time now we still haven't filled in this whole uh, equation yet um, well we've with what we have addressed it here we addressed all the parentheses we addressed all the exponents uh, we addressed the division that's over here, but here's what you are saying, you know, left to right. Um, this multiplication really can be done after this point. So we really can handle right now this addition and subtraction. So now that this result, this T1, which is A divided by B is done, now we can calculate the 10 minus the A divided by B. So at this point in time, these two concurrent statements are taking place and they're independent of each other. They do have to come after this point, meaning after this is calculated, this can be done. After each of these are calculated, then this can be done. But these can be done at the same time. So what we have in terms of this calculation right here, we have the 10 minus A divided by B. And by this calculation right here, now we have the D plus E to the F minus G. So the last thing that can be carried out is taking this, taking this, and adding it to this times this. So the final step would be taking the 10 minus T1 here, adding it to C times the T5, and that gets a result that would go uh, into Z. Um, listing it out as sort of a, a single piece of code, um, we have so co-begin, co-end, that means these statements here can run in different processors. Co-begin, co-end, these statements can run in different processors. The idea, usually in coding, is that things will go in order, and that means that um, this will have to be completed before this is done. This will have to be completed then before this is done. Um, but here we've taken this complex equation, broken it down into smaller steps, and by us breaking that down, it, we actually have had, then in this case, multiple processors working on the problem so that the problem can be done uh, a little more quickly. Now, that's not all of Chapter 6. Those are just two sort of topics I wanted to go over. Uh, you know, one, that uh, the idea of the signaling of saying whether something is being used or not, and the other idea of an equation being broken down into pieces.